during May, I had some incredible sessions spear fishing for flatfish, and I put together another video about it. There's a lot of tips throughout this video. Hopefully, you enjoy it. If you do, please do subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out and helps the channel grow. Now, in my first session this week, I headed out to some offshore reefs. These are about a kilometer offshore, and they consist of these pinnacles just sticking up. The seabed around the pinnacles is between 10 and 12 meters, and at low tide, the pinnacles go just over the surface. There's quite a lot of structure there. Now, it's a really magical place to spear. The viz is generally far better off these pinnacles than it is closer into the shoreline of Anglesey. And although sometimes there's not that many fish about, it really depends on the tide. It's a really interesting place to go. You can hunt in the kelp, you can scan the sand for flatfish, and there's always some sort of life there. Now, I was fishing here in the middle of the spider crab migration, and there's a lot of them about. You can hopefully hear this one just crunching over the sand. And often you'll find them quite high up in the water as well. I was just coming up from a dive here, and I saw this spider crab just clinging onto the kelp. It's quite interesting seeing it that high up. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have a catch back on this session. Otherwise, I could have taken quite a few of these. These make an absolutely exceptional crab curry my favorite way to cook them the meat in these spider crabs is, it's far better than lobster it's far better than brown crab you get so much kind of really sweet succulent meat and i absolutely love them now i also found a very small brown crab this is quite an interesting find because there's not many of these about off anglesey and it's just incredible how strong they are even with a crab this small it was pretty difficult trying to prise it out of the sand, so I'll have to go back and try and get some more down there. Now some of the sandy areas here are fairly deep, and you can see I've found this area here with quite a few worm casts. Often this can be a good way to, to spot flatfish. And very late on I saw this ray. I almost thought it was a flounder to start with. You know, the camouflage looked a bit similar, but it was really nice seeing a ray underwater. You don't see that many of these about, and I'd love to see a really big one. Now, even though I was mostly hunting flatfish, it's always worth having a few dives and seeing what else you can pick up. And whilst I don't really uh, eat dogfish, I have eaten dogfish in the past, but it's just too much prep. It's quite nice sometimes just watching them swim, they look like a snake underwater. And I do always enjoy catching them by hand as well. You know, they must not get hunted by seals. They must taste just, just too bad for a seal to eat. But it's fun just to, you know, to hunt them and release them. Now you can see here, see these very light coloured patches in the sand. These are areas where flatfish have previously been lying. And the reason those patches are so light is because if the flatfish has taken off. It's just disturbed the sand and taking the ripples out and the very next dive in this area I came across a place now I knew there was going to be a flatfish here because I'd come across those imprints and I see this place very very late on and take it from point blank range now the camouflage on this fish was just sensational if I hadn't been that close to it there's no way I would have seen it just have a look at this this place has not even buried itself in the sand it's just like a silhouette there you know, incredible camouflage on this fish and it was nice getting a, a place on the spit pretty early now as I drifted over the reefs I loaded up to two bands often for flatfish hunting in the you know that last place I shot with two bands but generally for flatfish I'll hunt with one band you don't need a very powerful spear your know, flatfish are quite thin you don't need a big amount of power to go through one and I actually had a quick look for some bass now the tide had started to run at this point and the moment the tide starts running at this point even though it doesn't run that quickly the fish just seem to appear and you can just about see quite a large bass actually now i take a shot and i miss that and the reason i missed that was because i didn't fully extend my shooting arm now i see another bass off the surface i'm breathing up and you can see the gun in this clip just waving around as i shoot and that's probably why i missed this one you know, that swell on the surface really puts your aim off and you can see the bass just milling around underneath me now i did take a bass the current had kind of really got up at this point um you know, it's good to get a bass this was shot from the surface as well actually it was probably about four meters down just saw a silhouette and took it but 
it was a nice fish not massive about 48 49 centimeters but two very good fillets of meat now i explored some of the shallower areas actually on the way back in i loaded that with one band and in the next clip you'll see why this is a nice flounder just sat in the open on some stones now if i'd loaded with two bands there's a pretty high chance i'd have blunted my spear there so one band was perfect to shoot a flounder on those stones now immediately after this flounder again in the shallows i came across this place and the camouflage on these is unreal just completely buried in the sand all you can see if you look here is the silhouette now it's easy because i'm pointing the spear at it but these are so easy to miss and it was uh, amazing just to have two flatfish on the spear or uh, well, three flatfish at this point pretty quickly i'm gonna put one on my float put the flounder on my float and uh the place here now i was hoping to find a slightly bigger place and i looked for an area with worse vids the current had picked up by this point and this is still a fair way offshore you know i'd come back in and then i thought you know what i'll go back out and have another look so i dived down an area with some slightly worse vids and i came across a huge place on the sand actively hunting this was mega easy to shoot this is a new personal best place at 55 centimeters it's by far the biggest place i'd ever seen i was absolutely chuffed with this and just feel how uh, how thick the meat was on it an absolutely superb fish and i finished the session on that i wasn't going to get better than this it was a great time to finish in my second session i targeted a really shallow area with some strong currents and you can see here some school bass just milling around appreciate the viz isn't amazing here you know, the viz is only about three to four meters but you can just see these small sort of 30 35 centimeter bass just drifting along with the current it's quite nice watching the bass hunting like this you really do learn a lot about the fish just by observing smaller ones in areas like this came across a pretty cool shipwreck unfortunately the current was really it was just running too strong to breathe up and i was pretty out of breath just on the surface now, i had a quick look underneath the shipwreck i have to come back here at slack water this was uh, this is pretty cool actually hoping to find a bass under it however i suspect my fast filling on the surface and a less than stealthy duck type in such a big current probably scared off any bass that was under there but it was pretty nice just diving it and having a look round. just saw some bait fish kind of lining up here and after that i knew that plates were probably nearby they always seem to be in these areas where there's a lot of sand eels but the marks that i dive anyway off anglesey now frustratingly i haven't shot a mullet for quite a long time you can see here two mullet moving very quickly in the current and somehow i just miss an absolute point blank range now i'm going to take you through a bit of a drift dive here I'm just drifting over the sand at quite high pace now one of the key things with this kind of diving is to have belief you have to believe that a flatfish is there if you don't have that belief you won't look properly and you won't see it and see i just spook one there now i'm back in the current's chaotic and even though i'm getting washed around everywhere you've got to believe that a flatfish could turn up at any point and there's a nice place there so it's so important to have that belief that a flatfish is there because it makes you look properly. It's another nice place on the spear, about 40 centimeters, and I baked this one whole. A lot of meat on it. So I hope you enjoyed that video. It wasn't quite the video I intended to make, um, but hopefully you've picked up a lot of top tips through it. If you do, you know, please leave a like, and if you subscribe to the channel, as I said at the start, that will really help the channel grow. Otherwise, I will see you next time.